For five years, the Vauxhall Cavalier had established itself as one of the most successful super touring cars of all time. It bowed out by taking John Cleland to the driver's title in the 1995 British Touring Car Championship. Exit the Cavalier in triumph. Enter Vectra amid optimism and expectation. All the team have seen is a prototype several months earlier in Germany. But engineers had already begun detailed work on the Vectra racing project when the first body shell arrived at the factory. Okay then, chaps, let's have a look. This was the car with which Vauxhall expected to keep pace with the heightened competition and prestige of super touring racing, not only in Britain, but worldwide. With the exception of the engine, every critical part of the new racing car will be produced here in Northamptonshire. The design, the fabrication of the parts, and the meticulous attention to detail that goes into the final assembly of the first prototype car takes over 450 hours. It's a joint project between the UK and Germany, with Swindon Racing providing the engines. But the factory is the central coordinating point for the whole vital project. Input comes from many different quarters and a vast range of technological and motor racing expertise is called upon. And among the most vital input comes from the drivers, especially the champion, John Cleland, enthusiastically involved. that we're starting with are better and it should be a big improvement. So with the CAD, you were able to design the roll cage and determine where the plus and minus points were over the, the Vectra against the last year's Cavalier before you even saw a body shell. That's right, yes. Yeah, I mean, immediately we could see... Cleland must be patient. The driver takes over later. Most of the work so far has been done by computers, but the computers say it's looking good. With the help of GM engineers in Russellsheim, the roll cage for the first time has been integrated into the production shell. The result is torsion rigidity 30% stiffer than last year's Cavalier for no increase in weight. Weight is critical. Even the spray painting is carefully monitored. Too much paint can mean too much weight. Swindon racing engines have been responsible for the development of the Vauxhall two-litre race engine for the past six years. Under the watchful eye of proprietor John Dunn, the development is continuing to produce an engine that suits the particular characteristics of the Vectra. A new and further developed chassis requires a different type of power. It may be one of the oldest racing engines in the sport, but it's still among the most powerful, with a wonderful record of reliability. There was no engine failure in the whole of Vauxhall's 1995 season. An engine like this is the product of experience and common sense, a constantly evolving project. Every engine that Swindon build goes on the testbed to quantify performance, to check for leaks, and make sure that every element of the engine is working to maximum efficiency. Vauxhall team driver James Thompson is the impressed spectator. I suppose the advantage of here is it's a, a controlled environment uh, as a test bed. Well, that's correct. I mean, we have to do it this way initially to get the right... John Dunn's philosophy is that the much vaunted maximum horsepower is not the most crucial element. The amount of race time that's spent at maximum revs is comparatively small. More time is spent around 7,500 to 8,000 revs. That's where the power and torque is most needed, and that's where this engine delivers. Wow. 
James Thompson, one of the most exciting new talents in the sport, introduced to the kind of power that will surely make him a major challenger once again in 1996. What excites Vauxhall most about the Vectra project is the lack of any need to compromise. The Cavalier might have been a continuous set of compromises that worked well. The Vectra project is much more a blank sheet of paper, a project to design a race car rather than take a road car and make a race car out of it. Not just any race car, but one that can race and win all over the world. Progress was swift and exciting. Eight weeks after taking delivery of the first body shell, the car was ready for its first test, and Vauxhall Motorsport boss Mike Nicholson would get his first trackside glimpse of the future. There's a fair bit of work left to do. Are they going to be burning the midnight oil for tomorrow? We will be, I'm afraid. They were burning it last night as well. Yeah. It's the usual situation this time uh, in the birth of a new car, but uh, there's a few problems to iron out, so we'll be out there tomorrow at Silverstone. Silverstone first run? Yep. Fantastic, I'll, I'll be there, I won't miss that. Sunrise at Silverstone, the home of British motorsport. For the still secret Vectra, it's the day of destiny. An early morning start is chosen to keep the Vectra away from prying eyes on its debut. It was set to be an exciting day, but it was primarily a systems check to make sure that the cooling system, the fuel and the oil systems were all working. Vauxhall had arrived at this point some two or three months earlier than is usual, an illustration of the determination and serious commitment of the manufacturer, as well as the potential of the Vectra to make an immediate challenge. With John Cleland out of the country, James Thompson was to get the honor of the first run, the South African Mike Briggs was standing by for a few laps later in the session. But the tension was apparent as the moment approached for the new Vectra to turn its wheels for the first time. A more central driving position with the driver positioned further back in the car to aid weight distribution, that's the first contrast that James Thompson experienced. A year of design and development is about to be put to the test. It's a very special moment, the birth of a new racing car. Visiting South African touring car champion Mike Briggs also tries the car and exhibits some pretty smart hand and footwork as he takes the Vectra to the limit. The initial verdict is very encouraging indeed, but now comes a winter of fine tuning and hard work to guarantee that the Vectra will be a winner. The 1995 championship had been won by the Cavalier. If that title could be successfully defended by the Vectra, Vauxhall could claim one of the great achievements in super touring racing. So stand by for some tremendous excitement in 1996.